Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You know, I was pretty fortunate. I picked up on Lightroom relatively quickly. I just loaded some images into it, started doing some editing, and within no time I was able to get a decent edit of my images with Lightroom. But with that said, it really did take hours and hours and hours of formal training for me to really understand how Lightroom works and how to use it to get consistent good results from image to image to image. I think that it's that way for many people. Many people can mess around with it and get decent results to begin with. Then they need to get some more training in order to better use it. There are though some people that just don't take up. They don't pick up Lightroom that well and they're loading their images into it and they're really not getting a good edit with it from the get-go. Well, if you're that person and you don't have time right now to look at some like more formal training, you just want to see your raw files edited and what they look like, well, this video is for you. In today's video, I'm just going to show you a quick way to get a decent edit of just about any type of image in Lightroom. Now, this is no substitute for learning Lightroom properly and learning what all the different sliders and all the different tools do. This is just a way for you to just get started and get an idea of what you can do with Lightroom. All right, I have this image here. It is an unedited RAW file. And this is something that you'd probably be dealing with. It looks uninspiring, it's unedited. Where do you start? Well, after you get it in Lightroom, go to the develop module and go to the basic tab. What I recommend you do now, again, this is for beginners, not for everyone. Once you start learning Lightroom and you're a little more experienced, you probably won't want to do this. But take highlights all the way down and shadows all the way up. Now, once you do that, you've flattened the image quite a bit. There's not as much contrast in it, but you get to see detail throughout the highlights all the way through to the shadows. Now, get a white point by holding the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. Click on the whites slider. When you do that, you'll get a black screen. Move the white slider to the right until you see some colors coming through. When you see those colors coming through, that means you're starting to clip those color channels. So when you see green, red, or blue, you're clipping those color channels. Where you see white, that means you're clipping all three color channels. You typically don't want to clip at all, especially the highlights. So you're gonna pull that down now until all that color dissipates and you just have your black screen. So you just want it just to the point where that color starts to come through, then back it off. All right, so that is a perfect white point. Now do the same thing for the blacks. Hold in that Alt Option key, click on the black slider. Now this time the screen will turn white. Move it to the left till you see some colors coming through and you can see we're starting to see some green and blue down there. Typically, most people for landscape photography like to clip the blacks just a little bit. So you're going to want a little bit of that color coming through. Just like that. Let go, see what it looks like. If it looks like it's too bright, then hold in that Alt Option key and click on that black slider and move it more to the left again, make it a little darker. If it seems like your dark parts are too dark, then do the opposite. Click hold in the Alt Option key, click on that black slider, move it to the right. I think that is pretty good right there. So we've moved four sliders and we've gone from this to this. So, so far so good. Now go to the Presence section of the Basic tab and move the Texture slider a little bit to the right, move the Clarity slider a little bit to the right. If you need to dehaze a little bit, there's a little bit of haze in the shot, move that to the right as well. If you want to add haze, move it to the left. It's up to you. I'll move it to the right very slightly. Then you're going to want to add either vibrance or saturation. My recommendation is if you have a really colorful shot already, move vibrance. It's not as heavy handed as saturation. Also, if you have a person in the shot, move vibrance. Saturation tends to give people sunburns because it will affect the reds, pinks, and oranges a little bit more than it does the uh, is compared to vibrance, which doesn't affect those colors as much. In this case, I'll move the vibrance a little bit to the right. So there's our edit. We, remember, we started out with this and we ended up with this. Let me show you on another image and we'll do the exact same thing. 
highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up. Hold in that Alt Option key, click on the white slider, move it to the right till you see some colors come through, then just back it off till all those colors are gone. Similarly for the blacks, hold in that Alt Option key, click on the slider, move it to the left till you see some color come through, then maybe you want that little bit of color to come through. That looks pretty good. That is a good setting for most landscape images, having the black slider bleed through just a little bit when you hold in the Alt Option key. If you're doing a portrait, you may not want that. You may want it just like you adjusted the white slider where you see that color come through and then just back it off until that color is gone. Next, we'll add some texture. We'll add some clarity. We'll add a tiny bit of dehaze. And again, well, this time, why don't I add some saturation? And there is my edit on this image. There is before and there is after. Now, let's try one last one. I purposely chose this one because it's a little bit underexposed. But we're going to be doing the exact same thing. We'll take highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up. Then we're going to get a white point. We're going to hold in that Alt Option key, click, and move that to the right until we see some color come through, and then back it off. Do the same thing for the blacks until we see some color come through, and then leave it there for the blacks. And then as I look at it at this point, it still looks a little bit underexposed. So I'll go up to the exposure slider for this photo and just move that to the right till it looks more properly exposed. Then I'll go back to texture, add some clarity, add a tiny bit of dehaze, and we'll add some saturation as well. So there we are. That's how you could very quickly do a decent edit on images. And again, this is for those of you that really don't know where to begin. And I strongly recommend, though, that you get some more formal training so you can better understand what these sliders do and get a better, more consistent edit from image to image to image going forward. With that said, uh, in a couple weeks, I hope to be releasing my new Lightroom series where I cover every single thing that is in Lightroom. It's going to be hours and hours of training and dozens and dozens of videos talking about everything in Lightroom that will hopefully be your the last thing you'll ever need to learn how to use Lightroom. That's it. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>